but I find it simplest to illustrate it by hearing without comment so that you can get into tune with what is. You can't really get out of tune with it, but we don't know that yet. <laughs> Maybe some of you do. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the show, Trucking Tendencies. I am your host, Eddie with the Y. And this is going to be a boring one. This is on truck, more uh, trucking business magazine on landlinemagazine.com, landline.media, oida.com, the February 2024 issue. And I apologize, I have not signed up yet. This, I guess, is a complimentary copy. And I'm going to read uh, two articles to make it two in one podcast here. It's going to be the Fed Up section, page 18, ATA incorrect in driver shortage claims. Economics professor says let's go read that one first 18 let's see what this guy got a sight no evidence this is by my mark schremer senior editor thanks mark so ata incorrect and driver shortage claims economics professor says for decades many of the trucking Many in the trucking industry have claimed that there is a driver shortage. An economics professor, however, however, lands on the growing list of people who will tell you that narrative is false. Stephen Burks, a professor of the University of Minnesota, Morris, recently explained his assessment during a presentation at a safety summit in Kansas City. Missouri and on landline now there is no evidence of an actual long-term shortage Burke says Burke's along with professors Arnie Kildergaard Jason W. Miller and Christine Monaco recently published the study when is high turnover cheaper question a simple model of cost trade-offs in a long-distance truckload motor carrier with empirical evidence and policy implications. One key takeaway from the study is that there is not a driver shortage in the trucking industry. We, we review the evidence for a shortage and find it unconvincing, the study states. We also review empirical evidence that long-distance truckload has had persistently high turnover since the mid-1980s. The American Trucking Association has reported a shortage of truck drivers in the long-haul market since about 1985. Burke noted, however, that the reality is high turnover. In that segment, incorrectly leads ATA to conclude there's a shortage. We find that the number of employees move up and down with the cycles and rates exactly as you would expect, said Burks, who worked as a truck driver from 1976 to 1986. So is there a shortage? Well, when rates go up enough, which means carriers offer more signing bonuses and tweak up their wages we get more drivers and when rates go down and carriers stop offering signing bonuses and let their wages stagnate as inflation goes up we get people exiting it works like any normal blue collar labor market according to Burke's ATA's own report indicate a 92% driver turnover rate per year for large truckload motor carriers. Is there a shortage? 
normal fu- normal fluctuations in the market for freight and the market for drivers say no burke said when why then does the industry think there's one well because in long distance truckload the nature of competition around cost means that especially middle and large sized carriers can't afford to pay enough to get enough drivers to stay what they miss is that not being able to make the pay or conditions attractive enough looks like a shortage to them but isn't in the big picture burke said the implications of the false driver shortage narrative can lead to dangerous policies such as the pilot program that allows under 21 year old drivers to operate in interstate commerce that's between states out of state what's the problem here well some teenage drivers are safe and training does help bank ads burke ads but on average this group is significantly less safe than older drivers if under 21 drivers are fully deployed to operate in interstate trucking burke has projected that crashes will increase by a measurable amount and driver turnover actually will increase oida pushes back against driver shortage claims the owner operator independent driver association has long refuted ata's claims of a shortage of truck drivers this past fall the oida foundation released a one-page report that takes a closer look at ata's annual projections of how many truck drivers will be needed Analyzing reports back to 2015, the OIDA Foundation's analysis point out large discrepancies in ATA's projections. In ATA's 2015 report, it predicted a shortage of 73,500 drivers by 2016 and 160,000 by 2023. By the time ATA released the 2016 and 2023 reports, However, the organization indicated that its projections were off by 50% and 62.5% respectively. In addition, ATA doesn't provide the methodology methodology for how it arrives at these numbers. It just highlights that whatever methodology they're using, which they never tell you how they're arriving at their number is absolutely wrong and false said andrew king of the oida foundation oida argues that trucking has a driver retention problem rather than a shortage turnover rates at large fleets are often at 90 percent or higher and statistics from the american association of motor vehicle administrators show that state issue more than 400,000 new commercial driver's license each year that's it's a lot so a growing list in recent years more groups and individuals are coming around the idea that the driver shortage claims are false in 2019 report from the u.s bureau of labor statistics determined that there wasn't a shortage and freight waves recently published an article refuting ata's shortage claims in july nbc news reported that truckers were coping with low freight rates due to the overcapacity in the industry just recently the chief economist for ata made a statement about how the freight market was soft and that there's too much capacity king said and by capacity they mean too many trucks and too many drivers you can't have too many trucks and too many drivers and have a driver shortage that's ridiculous and doesn't make sense that is very true so that's the high turnover rate and to me it makes sense i'm gonna say the media too um 
who's who's behind that saying that they're always saying that there's a shortage ata so what benefit do they get if there's a what are they trying to increase people to enter it and by doing that it just it doesn't really assist or help because you're putting it in the media and you think that we're the only people that get that media There's a uh, Hindu origin people here. There's Chinese people here that have family back in their country, and they're watching news and they're telling them, "Hey, this is what's going on in the news too. There's a driver shortage. You want to come over here? It's going to cost you a thousand, thousand five hundred bucks, and then another two thousand to get your license, and then about let's say three to four thousand dollars. You're going to start driving and generating money really quick." So you want to do it? They look at the numbers and they jump on the boat. So that's slowly making um, it's slowly it's it's slowly, but more like rapidly increasing the turn the the amount of length of time that owner operators have to be turning wheels wheels turning to make a profit. Uh, and it's terrible like it shouldn't be you shouldn't take it there's a flat there's a there's a number for everybody but they're sure I mean not paying attention so we're gonna go on to this next one I like this one this one's good page 64 truck talk clean diesels burn cleaner with alternative fuels by Tom Berg page 64 see what this is all about so clean diesels burn cleaner with alternative fuels low carbon formulations can help reduce pollution right now by Tom Berg contributing editor everyone with any sense wants clean air you'd probably acknowledge the air in lots of big cities and is less polluted than it was decades ago visible smog is gone and air just smells nicer and is more pleasant and he- and healthier to breathe and the equipment of a on a modern diesel engine contributes to that positive development diesels today emit almost no pollutants compared to the so-called pre-emission limits days of the early 2000s and before will spare you a lecture on how carbon emissions as in carbon dioxide is changing the climate warming the earth and causing severe weather even when it's even when even if that's not true and the scientists are wrong airborne carbon does contribute to pollution and less of it helps us all and less of it helps us all how to reduce carbon electric vehicles maybe but they're still in the future and probably will never make sense for long haul trucking diesels still dominate all types of trucking and will for many years notes the engine technology forum a group that promotes the advantages of diesel according to executive director alan schaefer nearly seven million new technology diesel trucks are on the roads delivering our goods and services with near zero emissions nationwide for every electric commercial truck on the road there are nearly 1100 powered by internal combustion engines ICEs are too good to quickly throw away in favor of electric propulsion agrees Mike Roeth executive director of the North American Council on Freight Efficiency, who is bullish on electric vehicles but also realistic. While we at NACFE believe battery electric trucks are the answer for the future, a position everyone shares, we know that the transition to battery electric vehicles will take place over decades, Roweth said. Today, battery electric trucks are not viable in many duty cycles. 
and and even if they were there are not enough of them being produced for fleets to make the switch recent research shows the internal combustion engine primarily diesel and some natural gas and gasoline power 99.91 percent of the nation's heavy trucks as the trucking industry explores new fuels along with battery electric and fuel cell technology it is clear that the diesel and other internal combustion engines are going to continue to play a dominant role for many years one fix to the carbon problem is adopting low carbon fuels which includes renewable diesel biodiesel natural gas and propane all burn cleaner than traditional petroleum diesel but are more expensive to produce they are sometimes subsidized to encourage use by operators of trucks and other vehicles natural gas requires special handling and equipment and propane is limited to light and medium duty trucks but the other two can be used right now by owner operators in their current trucks where they originate and how they work renewable diesel produced from fats and oils such as soybean oil and, or canola oil and processed to be chemically the same as petroleum diesel compared to conventional diesel fuel renewable diesel's carbon intensity is 50 percent to 80 percent lower according to the u.s department of energy Renewable diesel will burn in any diesel engine, so it can immediately substitute for petroleum diesel to lower exhaust emissions. But one of the containing extra oxygen can cause bulky operation in cold weather. Biodiesel Made by blending vegetable oils, animal fats, and scavenged restaurant grease into petroleum-based diesel fuel. It is designated as B5, B10, and so on, meaning 5% or 10% biofuel with conventional diesel comprising of the other 95 or 90%, respectively. Most engine manufacturers approve up to B20 fuel for their diesels. Continued, B20 cuts carbon emissions by 15% and B100 reduces it by 75%. Reputable suppliers produce biodiesel under the strict standards written by the American Society for Testing Materials. And the industry itself has a BQ9000 standard that assures purity and performance according to Clean Fuels Alliance America. Early use of biodiesel was mandated by authorities in several states by, but caused disruptions and loud complaints from truckers. It seems that biodiesel acted as a solvent cleaning out trucks, fuel lines and sending sludge to filters, which then plugged and starved engines of fuel. Problems subsided after the lines got cleaned out and filtered elements repeatedly changed. For vehicles manufactured after 1993, biodiesel can be used in diesel engines and fuel injection equipment with little impact on operating performance, according to the U.S. Department of Energy. But if the vehicle is older than that, the engine could be assembled with incompatible elastomers, elastomers which can break down with repetitive repetitive high blend biodiesel use some fueling stations sell biodiesel in b5 or lower concentrations and there might or might not be a label on the pump said abjit shark of exxon mobile who spoke at a technology and maintenance council session last fall he added that Cold affects biodiesel much like straight diesel, meaning it can cloud and wax, restricting flow through a truck's fuel system at 
but at a higher temperature. The oils add lubricity to biodiesel, which benefits an engine's internal parts. However, it loves water, so a truck ought to have a fuel water separator or the biodiesel treated with an, add with an additive as it goes into the tank. Renewable diesel is not as readily available, so like higher biodiesel blends, it has to be sought out by a truck operator. While renewable diesel doesn't have the clouding and waxing problem, it does need lubricity treatment. Chasa Carr said, What do they cost? B20 sells for about 20 cents a gallon more than petroleum diesel, according to the DOE, and B100 sells for about 85, 85 cents more. That can put them out of financial reach unless you have access to subsidized fuel. So they take subsidized fuel. Well, I'll Google that right now. But uh, say a relative of biodiesel is plain, ratable cooking oil, but an engine must be altered to burn it. And besides, it would cost at least 10 times more than straight diesel. Leave it in the kitchen. And the impurities, it just wrecks it. Um, there's this gentleman. His name is... What's his name? He wrote this book. Um... Uh, from what was it called from the from the kitchen to the uh, the America runs on Africa I totally it's skipping my mind but um, using using uh, uh, by uh, vegetable oil is cute right it's it's good it's a nice science project and it's worked and it's continued to work but for the long run they're not filtering it out good enough and it's going to just run the engine into the ground because of the impurities supposedly what the gentleman was saying but um subsidized fuel is is not a cool thing i mean it's nice for the who's it nice for it, it's not nice for the for the citizens i think subsidized fuel is fuel that they it's tax money that they take from the citizens and they give it to the producers uh, what is subsidized fuel let's see what this says alright I'm not a robot so So what is a fuel subsidy? A fuel subsidy is a financial assistance provided by the government to reduce the cost of fuel for consumers. It's done to keep fuel lower and make it more affordable for the general population. Oh yeah. I don't know, it's just... Yeah, they. I mean, there's a. I, I mean, it's up in the air. It's questionable for me. I don't like it that they uh, pull that off like that in that manner. But um, it shouldn't be just to get it for the public to get make it cheaper for the public. No, like uh, it's 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 neat. I mean, but only time will tell. Uh, thanks for tuning in and checking out this podcast and for the support and yeah keep on trucking and eyes on the road thank you